First at four, a Livonia mother is charged in the death of her own child. Prosecutors talk about what happened just before the baby boy died. Also ahead, Pledge of Allegiance controversy. A local school is ready for anything this morning as this story goes national. Our Paula Tupman was there. A new hurricane dangers. One storm brushing the East Coast right now. Two others lined up. We are tracking three storms first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, a Livonia mother is facing charges today in the death of her baby boy. 32-year-old Leslie Newman is charged with second-degree involuntary manslaughter and child abuse. Prosecutors say Newman placed the infant in the bed with her, and that created an unsafe sleeping situation leading to the baby's death. Newman was arraigned this morning, placed on a $100,000 bond. She's due back in court later this month. We are waiting to see if a man who was convicted of murder when he was just 12 years old will be released from prison today. Today is DeMarco Harris's 21st birthday, and he is scheduled for release. Harris shot and killed 24-year-old Trisha Babcock during an attempted robbery back in 2009. In 2010, Harris was found guilty of felony murder, along with a list of other charges. Harris received a blended sentence, initially placed into a high-security juvenile facility. After eight years in prison, the court determined last week he would be released today. We'll have a live update tonight at 5. Centerline police are working to track down thieves who broke into a Benson's medical supply store. The thieves moved quickly into the store near I-696 and Van Dyke. Police say in under three minutes, they grabbed more than $50,000 worth of prescription drugs. Investigators are studying surveillance video, which captured the crime in progress. The manager says they'll be making some security additions to the store. Well, there could be some real fireworks at a city council meeting in Fraser tonight following months of drama over sexual harassment claims. The city council is having a special meeting at 6 to consider the removal of Mayor Joseph Nichols and city councilman Matt Hemmelberg. The pair is accused of making suggestive comments or unwanted touching of female workers. Tonight at 5, we'll have a live preview of the meeting and what the mayor expects will happen. Now, the local controversy grabbing national attention. This sixth grader at East Middle School over in Farmington Hills says a teacher yanked him out of his chair when he refused to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Today, word of a possible rally had the school taking all necessary precautions. Our Paula Tupman shows us how this debate continued this morning. I mean, this has really been a hot button issue, certainly one that the Farmington Hills School District has been grappling with all weekend of the threat of a rally. They honestly, they pulled out all of the stops in terms of security and extra administrators. The rally itself didn't materialize, but an interesting conversation did. East Middle School was surrounded by police on every corner, buffeted by numerous administrators. A rally had been planned to support a student's right to sit during the Pledge of Allegiance. You may remember Stone Cheney says he was forcibly yanked from his chair by a disapproving teacher and then screamed at by a substitute teacher when he chose to sit out the Pledge of Allegiance during the first week of school at East Middle School in Farmington Hills. A teacher consultant comes up from behind me and snatches me out of my chair violently. I don't stand for the pledge because I don't pledge to a flag. I pledge to God and my family. This morning, less a rally and more a thoughtful conversation about the incident and what's right. He have the right to sit for the Pledge of Allegiance um, because it represents his values in some way. And there's no good reason for a teacher to use physical force on a student. While some parents hurriedly escorted their children to school with safety concerns. Just for her to get to school, uh, I guess unharmed and uh, that she gets there on time. None were to be had as those who supported Stone Cheney's actions stood shoulder to shoulder with administrators. We feel the school is taking correct action, but we understand if the Cheney family wants to continue 
to bring light to the situation. It's very important for people to understand that these young people have a tremendous consciousness. The school sent out a note to parents confirming that the homeroom teacher had been suspended pending further investigation and the substitute teacher had been uninvited to teach in the district. The notice from the superintendent reading in part, no child in Farmington Public Schools should ever feel threatened or disrespected for holding viewpoints that differ from the teacher or staff member. We need to look at whether a child was mistreated by teachers. That is our important charge of this. Now there's some people who say this just is not completed yet. They still need to see what the outcome is, but they are glad that the school district appears to be handling this head on and in a transparent way. Paula Tutman, Local 4. It's hard to believe, but another hurricane is having an impact on the United States. We are tracking Hurricane Jose. And while this storm isn't expected to make landfall, it's already whipping up rough surf in New Jersey. Strong waves and rip tides are keeping most people out of the water. Even worse, Jose is not the only storm out there right now. For the latest, let's send it over to Andrew Humphrey, who is in for Ben. Thank you very much, Karen, and you're exactly right. Here's a look at Jose right here. You also have two other systems. You have Maria and you also have Lee. Now, Lee, not much to worry about. It's now a tropical depression, winds of 35 miles per hour. But Jose and Maria quite in, uh, packing quite a punch. Let's take a look at Jose in the track first. It's going to track along the east coast of the United States, not making landfall so far. That's the way it looks, and that's very fortunate. But close enough, as Karen mentioned, to churn up the surf from the Carolinas all the way through New Jersey and also New York. Now, the Lions play over in New Jersey later on tonight, just to the west of New York. Maybe some high clouds overhead, a slight chance of a shower, but that is it. But it will be getting closer to Nantucket Island, also Cape Cod, as we get closer to Thursday before it does another loop-de-loop, -loop, while at the same time dissipating by the end of this week. Now, Maria, a totally different story. A Category 3 system with winds of at least 120 miles per hour. Winds could get as high as 150 miles per hour. A very strong Category 4, nearly Category 5. And taking a bead on the lesser Antilles and eventually Puerto Rico before the day is done. We'll talk more about our local forecast coming right up. President Trump is taking center stage in the world of foreign affairs and diplomacy this week. He is in New York with other world leaders for the opening of the United Nations General Assembly. Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom with a look at the president's jam-packed agenda this week. Yeah, Karen, you're right. The president will be busy and the world will be watching. He took part in a meeting today on U.N. structural reforms where he said the U.N. has been mismanaged and has made some countries carry too much financial responsibility. After the hearing, the president summed up his views on the U.N. by saying this. A lot of potential. The United Nations has tremendous potential and we'll see how it works. What is his main message for the GA? I think the main message is make the United Nations great. Not again, make the United Nations great. Such tremendous potential, and I think we'll be able to do it. Now, the president has been very busy on the diplomatic front today. Karen, as you mentioned, speaking with the president of China about maximizing pressure on North Korea. The president also has separate meetings this afternoon with Israel's prime minister and the president of France with threats from Iran high on the agenda of those talks. He will have dinner this evening with several South American leaders, and the president will then give his first ever address to the U.N. General Assembly, and that will happen tomorrow. Now, during his appearance at the U.N. reform meeting today, Day, the president also managed to remind everyone of his real estate dealings. He said his Trump World Tower across the street from the United Nations was a success because he saw the potential of a site so close to the U.N. Karen, we'll have more from New York coming up tonight on the news at 5. For now, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right. Thank you very much, Kim. Sure. Appreciate that. As the United Nations focuses on North Korea this week, American B-1 bombers are running more military drills with South Korea. Drills like this are often conducted after North Korean provocations. These new exercises took place three days after North Korea launched an intermediate range missile that flew over Japan. Earlier this month, North Korea conducted its sixth and most powerful nuclear bomb test. First of four, we're on top of other stories making headlines across America following four days of protests. Officials in St. Louis are calling for things to calm down. 80 people were arrested Sunday night after violent protests filled the streets. Demonstrators are angry over Friday's acquittal of former St. Louis police officer Jason Stockley, a white officer acquitted of murder in the shooting death of Anthony Lamar Smith. 
after a chase back in 2011. Today, protesters gathered in a peaceful manner. The governor of Missouri has put the National Guard on standby in case protests turn violent again. Moving to New York, where a serious crash involving two buses this morning has left three people dead. The crash happened at a busy intersection. A city bus making a right turn was struck by a tour bus. The tour bus then crashed into a restaurant and nearby parking started a fire. Three people were killed and at least 16 others are injured. The cause of that crash remains unclear. However, officials say speed appears to be a factor. Still ahead is the toy industry facing a big shakeup just before the holidays. Got some disturbing new reports about one company that is in some serious trouble. In trending stories, this farmer's fundraising idea has gone viral. The story behind all these bras hanging on his fence. Up first, Dr. George is here. Well, Karen, it's a mistake that many parents are making when it comes to child safety. Up next, one mother describes how doing it the right way saved her son's life. That's next in Good Health. Is he a Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. It seems like business as usual here at Heather Highlands Golf Course, but that was not the case on Saturday. A fight broke out and gunshots rang out. We'll have the latest next. And good health. This is Child Passenger Safety Week, so it's a really good time to make sure any car seats that you have are properly installed. So we're bringing in Dr. Frank McGeorge with that reminder because you really need to make sure that they're installed correctly. That's exactly it. In fact, Karen, installation mistakes are really common when it comes to car seats, and it does significantly decrease their safety value. And I know we're supposed to have it in between the two arrows, right? Yes, Joe Mason is fulfilling one of his last duties as an expectant father, making sure the car seat for his soon to arrive daughter is installed properly. I think I passed the test. It was it was good. So he's come to Bridax headquarters in Fort Mill, South Carolina. Experts in both manufacturing car seats, as well as ensuring that when the products leave the assembly line, moms and dads know how to use them correctly. They are retracted, so you're good on that. The lessons and support are critical. Parents make mistakes with three out of four car seats. Whether it's inappropriate for the child's age, weight, height, it's used in the wrong direction, it's not installed properly. We had to stop driving past the scene of the accident every day. Jennifer Puckett sees the importance of a proper car seat fit in her son's sweet smile. A year ago, five-year-old Miles was a passenger in this car when it flipped over in an accident. I cannot believe that my child was in that car. He was found hanging upside down, safe and secure in his car seat. Without that car seat, um, there's just no way. I mean, he would have been out of that vehicle. Miles walked away with just one small scratch. Proof proper installation can be a lifesaver. In fact, I have no doubt car seats not only save lives, but they reduce injuries in general. Honestly, I cannot tell you how often I've taken care of families in car accidents, and by far the least injured person was the child in the car seat. There have been many times when I have actually asked if the child that was brought in mm -hmm. with the family was really in the same accident really? because they were that unharmed. Well, you do feel when you're strapping them in on those seats. I mean, they are oh, like, yeah. it's almost like a, you're in a rocket ship and they're in like really secure you bubble are, wrap, like you said. Right, you are protecting your most precious cargo with car seats, Definitely no doubt. worth making sure they're installed right and use them all the time. Yep. All right, thank you, Doc. Well, let's send it over to Andrew for today's weather. It looks like it's a pretty nice afternoon out there. Well, Karen, it is pretty warm out there with temperatures in the 70s, and some of the rain showers we've seen so far have slightly shifted off to the east. Now, they still exist here in southern portions of St. Clair County over on the east side, including uh, along Jefferson Avenue as you get closer to Gross Point Park and eventually up to St. Clair Shores. A couple of light showers still occurring. Not much in the way of thunderstorm activity, but we'll still see this on and off light rain continue. There's some downriver as well, south of I-94 in our south zone. Cloudy skies overhead, 71 degrees over at Metro, and just gray skies for now. Winds out of the northeast at around 8 miles per hour. Still relatively warm. At temperatures mostly in the 60s, though, where a cold front is trying to pass through. You can see 65 degrees for our friends in KPAC and around Emmett, while it's 71 for our friends over at Metro Airport. Still in the middle 70s in places like Dundee. And temperatures stay right about where they are as we go over the next few hours. Now, where some of those rain showers are occurring, visibility is a lot lower. So be careful on some of those wet roadways once you get south of 94. Traveling down I-75, closer to around Monroe, also along Route 23 between Ann Arbor and the Toledo area. Visibility down to one and a half miles over in Monroe.
but we'll see some drier conditions later on tonight. As these rain showers fade away by midnight, we're looking at mostly cloudy skies overnight, but you can still see some disturbances off to our west slowly migrating into our area. So that means a chance of showers for tomorrow as well. Doesn't mean a washout for Tuesday, but it does mean on and off rain once again. So make sure kids have their rain gear ready before they head off to school and before you head to work as well for yourself. We're looking at 61 degrees overnight tonight. The showers that we have now, especially to our south, slowly fade away. So during the afternoon rush hour, there'll still be some slick spots on roadways. Again, especially south of I-94 for our friends in Lenaway and Monroe counties especially. We're looking at temperatures in the 50s in many surrounding neighborhoods. Sunset this evening is at 737. Now during the day tomorrow, we're looking at on and off rain showers once again. Temperatures will go from the 60s back into the 70s. If we see a peak of sunshine in the afternoon, we'll make it up to 78 degrees. But if it stays cloudy like it is right now, count on 75 or a little bit less and a, a lower chance of showers as we get closer to dinner time tomorrow evening. Then guess what? It gets warmer again for the last few days of fall. It's going to excuse me last few days of summer. It will certainly feel like it for the first day of fall. It will still feel like summer temperatures back into the 80s as early as Wednesday. Rosh Hashanah begins. Sundown is at 735 and look at that Karen Friday in the weekend. We are still between 80 and 85 degrees. Sounds pretty nice. Nice way for the summer to end. Thank you very much, Andrew. Still ahead, another holiday tradition in danger thanks to online shopping and how some players turned four zeros into $5 million. We've got that lottery story coming up. Plus, Lady Gaga is canceling part of her world tour. Her message to fans today, and what about her visit to Detroit? But first, as we go to break, we can take a look at how the markets have closed for the day. As you can see, the Dow Jones, we're about to show the Dow Jones, the automotive stocks are up, and we'll take a look at the Dow. The local for in today's trending stories, can you imagine Christmas without Toys R Us? The Wall Street Journal is reporting the toy store could file for bankruptcy before the holidays. The journal says some suppliers are even holding back shipments until Toys R Us can pay cash on delivery. Like many old school retailers, the company has been hit by the shift to online shopping. Last year, 40% of its revenue came during the holidays. Well, there is a $5 million lottery story that is also trending today. Sunday night's daily numbers were 0, 0, 0, 0. More than 1,000 players matched the numbers and won $5,000 each, adding up to Five million. It is the first time all zeros have been drawn in the Daily Four game since it started back in 1981. The average total payout for the Daily Four is under $300,000, so this definitely was a huge payday. This story is making a lot of news on social media today. Lady Gaga postponing her European leg of her world tour, which was supposed to start this week in Barcelona. She was recently diagnosed with fibromyalgia and says severe pain is affecting her ability to perform. She sent a message to her fans saying in part, I ask for your grace and understanding and promise that I will come back and perform for you soon. Lady Gaga hopes to continue with her North American tour in November, which brings us, which would bring her to Little Caesars Arena, which is on November 7th. And take a look at this video from Norway. You're not seeing things. Those are actual bras hanging on a fence. It's a local farmer's fence. After losing women in his life to breast cancer, he wanted to come up with a way to raise money and also raise awareness. He posted on social media that he'd give money to breast cancer research for every bra left on his fence. Well, the response has been overwhelming. He even had to extend his fence. He's committed to giving nearly $10,000. Still ahead, if you know anyone who wants to live like a fairy tale princess, here is their chance. This cottage sounds adorable, but it does come with a price. Fit for a king. We'll be right back. Bullying. It's happening in schools and on the internet. And it's not just the children. So bullying is okay for me and to threaten my life, my family. Adults say they too are being bullied and police offer little protection. Tonight, meet a local family who files police reports, goes to prosecutors, and still finds no relief from the taunting. It's time we enact a law that stops this and makes it criminal. Adult bullying, the defenders tonight at 11. Right now it's
Finally, first at four, it could be one of the most unusual real estate listings that we've heard about. Karen, you're absolutely right. And it might be the perfect, it might be perfect for someone looking for their happily ever after. Take a look at this home for sale in the Seattle area. It's a fairy tale come true, ladies and gentlemen. A cottage inspired by the story Snow White. Take a look, it's a four bedroom cottage. It's on five wooded acres with stained glass windows, handmade doors. The <laughs> list price though is $775,000. If mm. you want to make your fairy tale dreams come true, it's going to cost you. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us for First at Four. We are back in a half hour with Local 4 News at 5. Inside Edition is straight ahead.